Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to my kitchen table, aka my embroidery table. I'm so glad to have you guys back for another Embroider With Me video. I have not done one of these in a very long time as I'm sure you guys are very aware of. I just have been I gotta be totally honest, a little bit burnt out from embroidery, but something about the spring and like the new year just gave me that like re-energized feeling to get back into some more like embroideries and crafts and stuff like that. So I'm really excited that you guys are here on my channel today. I picked the perfect day to embroider. It's rainy and gloomy outside. And so I thought what would be more fun than starting a new embroidery project? We are gonna be doing an embroidery that I am very excited about because this one feels very close to home, hint hint. We're gonna be embroidering a house and I'm really excited about this one because Jason and I, Jason's my husband, we are in the process of buying our first home here in Nashville and so I don't know, as I was brainstorming these ideas, I actually asked y'all on Instagram what I should embroider for this video and I actually got an alarming amount of y'all who said I should embroider my talk Riley. I'll pop a little picture of her right here, she is a cow. I was like, I don't think that Y'all understand that my embroidery skills are not that advanced. So I was talking to Jason and he thought it would be really fun to embroider a house since we are in that season of house hunting. Plus I figured it could be really fun to embroider a house because it could be a cute gift that you could give to someone that is in the process of purchasing a home or it could be a fun thing that you work on for yourself. We're gonna be embroidering a house. I actually have already created the template so you guys can go to my website. I'll link it down below. You can and print it out and it will be a PDF so that you guys can download it and then trace it onto your fabric. I have already traced it onto my fabric like this and basically what I do is I put the paper behind my fabric and then I press it up against the window and I trace it from there with just a normal pencil. I will link all of my supplies down below. If you guys are new to my channel, I have a whole playlist of embroidery videos where I walk you guys through the actual basics of embroidering, like how to thread a needle, what supplies to get, and all of that. So my supplies list will be linked down below that you can get online. And then I also have, like I said, tutorials on different types of stitches and techniques and all of that. So if you're new here, I have more embroidery videos that can kind of start you from the beginning it's actually called embroidery for beginners so it's very very step by step it's very slow I walk you guys through the process of learning how to embroider this one is gonna be just an embroider with me so if there are things that I'm saying in this video that maybe you're wondering about or wondering like how did she do that there are actual tutorials that I will link down below so all that info can be found in the description box this video I think I'm gonna be breaking up into a couple different parts the reason that I I don't film embroider with me videos all that often is because embroideries can take me four to six hours sometimes eight hours depending on how detailed they are and so it honestly just feels a little bit daunting to me to try to break that down into like a 30 minute video so I figured what I would try to do is do part of it in this video and then we'll finish it out in a separate part two video that way I don't have to like rush through everything but we can actually take our time I know y'all who have been subscribed to my channel for embroidery enjoy putting these videos on and embroidering alongside of me so I wanted to give that as an option before we get into the video i know you guys are going to ask what is on my lips i feel like that is like the most common question on any of my videos even if it has nothing to do with beauty you guys are always wondering what's your lip product or like what top are you wearing i will link my top and my lip product down below i just thought i would bring it so i wouldn't forget this is the tarte h2o gloss this is not sponsored i just remember in previous embroidery videos you guys asked me and I literally had no idea, I did not remember what I was wearing. This is the H2O gloss in the shade Salt Life. So that's the gloss that I'm wearing. We're gonna go ahead and get into this embroidery. Like I said, I already traced the pattern onto my fabric like this. One thing about this pattern that I want y'all to note is that this pattern is a rough outline that y'all can follow but you do not have to stick to so these lines on the roof and the lines here on the like roof siding, I don't really know what to call it. Those are just guidelines to help you create straight stitches. You don't have to actually stitch vertically and you don't have to stitch horizontally. I want you guys to be able to customize this pattern to whatever you want, whatever colors you want. I even put a little 
optional flower bed here in the front that we'll probably embroider in the next video but I wanted it to be a pretty blank canvas for y'all to take it and do what you want with it choose your colors choose what type of siding you want if you want to do brick if you want to do wood I don't I don't really know other sightings, maybe concrete, but I wanted it to be a really approachable design that y'all could customize because it could be like a cute gift or it could be a gift to yourself. You could create your own like little dream home colors and all that stuff. So keep in mind with this pattern, you're gonna want a hoop that is five inches or larger. The actual printout that you guys will download off my website has instructions on how to fit it to different sized hoops. For something like this, where it is a little bit more detailed, there's like small windows and stuff, I would not go any smaller than a four inch hoop. I would say a five inch hoop is probably a really, really good size for this specific design. There are some designs that you'll want smaller hoops for, and there are some designs that you're gonna want larger hoops for. I would say around a four, five, or six inch hoop is gonna be absolutely perfect with this design specifically. So how we are gonna start is by putting our fabric in our hoop. If you guys have embroidered before, you know how to do this. If I'm doing anything too quickly or you want more explanation like I said I have tutorials where I will legit walk you through every single thing that I'm doing I know embroidery can seem a little bit daunting a little bit intimidating if you've never done any type of sewing or you've never like watched someone embroider before so those tutorial videos are very slow paced and they should be able to clarify anything that you may have questions about with this video. I think this house is so cute. It honestly is getting me so excited to like embroider a home. Jason and I have been looking for homes just recently and we're gonna be looking over the next few months here in Nashville, but I just thought it was very appropriate to embroider a house. Currently, my embroider box is kind of a mess because I have been using it to do slight alterations to clothing rather than actually embroider. I have not embroidered in a very long time, but this is what my box looks like. I know a lot of y'all are gonna ask about it, where I get my supplies, where I get my threads. Again, all that stuff will be linked down below. And I've got to be totally honest, I actually do not have a game plan for this embroidery. So we're going to be doing this together. I'm going to be picking out colors kind of as I'm going. I did not like map this out other than drawing it out. So this is what the pattern looks like on our hoop. And it's so, so cute. I'm so excited to start working on this. So I'm thinking how I want to do my house is I'm thinking I want to do like a kind of off-white house. I don't want to do all white. Ooh, actually, change of plans. I want to do a beautiful sage green home with like a gray roof and then white trim. I hope that will look good. Like I said, I have not planned this out. So this could look terrible, but we're just going to go with it. So I'm thinking this beautiful sage green as the actual like siding and then for the trim I'm thinking like an off-white so not a pure white but maybe like this would be really pretty for the trim and then the actual roof itself I think I want it to be oh maybe not gray but maybe like a really pretty kind of cocoa brown I think these colors would be absolutely perfect for my little dream cottage. Jason and I actually want a very modern home, but I know we're a little bit like out there for wanting something super, super modern. So I was like, what is an approachable template that most of y'all would enjoy? And I thought this was so cute. I low key love little cottages though that have just a lot of character. I am gonna start with one of my needles here and you guys will want to probably split your thread. I've seen a few of you tag me in your embroidery stories and you're like, the thread is so thick. Be sure to split your thread. This piece is actually already split. If you're not sure what I mean by splitting your thread, it's literally like separating the piece of embroidery thread, which I explain in my embroidery 101 video. And then my embroidery Q&A will also answer a lot of those basic questions. But I just really like to split my thread because it makes everything a lot neater and I kind of always have my template off to the sides so that I can see sometimes pencil marks don't show up this is the pencil that I use also this one actually I really like for embroidery because it comes off pretty dark versus like some pencils I feel like just create very faint lines. So that's the pencil that I use. And again, that will be linked down below as well. How I'm gonna start is I'm gonna start at the base right here in the bottom right corner. 
Again, you do not have to embroider exactly how I am. I'm just showing you guys how I am going to do it. So I went ahead and I put a little knot at the end of my embroidery, but because we're going to do one long stitch across, I wanted to make sure that I've got at least a couple of just shorter stitches here in the front so that if by chance the knot pulls through the side that we've got some smaller stitches to kind of reinforce. So I'm going across like this and we're just going to create these long stitches. I'm so excited for this. I think this is gonna be so cute. I would love to know what y'all have been up to since I guess my last embroidery video. I don't even know when that was, but I'm like, I've missed y'all. I wanna know what projects y'all have been working on. Leave a comment down below and let me know like what kind of projects you guys have been interested in and just embroidering it doesn't even have to be embroidery other diys that you've been into that you've been loving that maybe something i should try i actually brought out like a lot of my paint supplies on valentine's day jason and i were like what's something that we could do that's like an activity you know i feel like we're always just eating or cooking <laughs> But it's like, what's something that we can do with our hands that would be really fun and just like a little bit different that we don't normally do. So I brought out all my paint supplies from college and we ended up painting just for a little bit. It was really cute and I'm really glad we did that. Okay, so this piece of thread was really short. So I'm already having to end my thread, but I'm so glad that I'm doing a sage green cottage. That makes me very happy. I'm really glad I didn't do white actually. I love a white house, like I I want a white house, but when embroidering on white, if you do white everything, it's probably gonna be a little bit tricky to see. So that's why I'm opting in for a color, but if you guys want to embroider a white house, please, more power to you. Guys, I also have started wearing a little bit more color because it's spring now. I mean, look at me, I'm in a I'm in a blue sweater, which is crazy for me. If y'all have been with my channel or you watch any of my other videos other than my embroidery stuff, you know that I literally just wear like tan in the winter. So now I'm tying a knot at the end of my thread like this. And I think I'm actually gonna use a little bit of a thinner needle. This needle that I'm using right now is like super, super thick. So as you embroider, your fabric will kind of start to change shapes on you. Just keep pulling it out to the side all right so we're gonna do again one small kind of stitch to reinforce that knot just in case it comes loose and i'm going to keep stitching across and now that we're at this little windowsill slash flower box depending on if you want the flower box or not you can change it into a windowsill if you want you can change the design however you desire i just thought i would put it in there just in case anybody wanted to do a cute little flower window box i thought it would be adorable so i wanted to give the option in the design in case that was something that you guys wanted so i hope that some of y'all do the flower box. I think it'd be so cute. That reminds me, be sure to tag me in your Instagram stories or post if you end up doing this design. I would just love to see your cute houses and see like how you guys make this pattern your own. I feel like a lot of my patterns are just very flexible. So I really like seeing y'all's take on the patterns and seeing how you just make them your own. So right now I'm going around the flower box with the green. And the reason that the patterns are so helpful is because with something like a house where you are really needing some straight lines, it's very helpful to just have that to be able to trace versus like trying to eye it. I feel like whenever I try to eye a straight line, it ends up looking so bad. And we're actually gonna do a long stitch from here down to kind of like even out the line so that it's not crooked because as you stitch i mean it's never going to be totally perfect and symmetrical and just straight because as you're stitching it affects the fabric and it affects the shapes and all of that so i say just like try your best try to keep the fabric tight try to keep the line straight and just like have fun with it because it's never going to be perfect i feel like that is 
something that y'all pointed out to me as one of y'all's concerns or like why you always felt embroidery was intimidating is because you were afraid that like it needs to be perfect or it needs to be like straight or it doesn't look like professional or anything like that and embroidery is totally just like for fun for me at least it is totally for fun it is just a way for me to do something with my hands and think creative i personally love how slow it is i feel like in this day and age i'm gonna get all like meta and stuff but in this day and age everything is so instant and everything is so just like i want it i want it now but embroidery i feel like is truly something that you cannot rush it like you just cannot embroider quickly <laughs> At least I can't and I try like when I was doing commissions I would try to like knock them out so that I wasn't spending you know eight hours on an embroidery that I'm getting paid like $30 for so I would try to do it quickly but you really just can't like embroidery is just such a slow skill and I think that's what makes it I don't know at least to me what makes it so fun is that it just feels like something that slows you down and it is just something that is creative and yeah, I've just, I've really missed it. Like when I was saying that I felt burnt out, I think I just had embroidered for like a long time. <laughs> I know that's like crazy people actually like embroider for their whole lives. Like I know accounts that literally are just embroidery accounts and they're cranking them out. But for me, I, if I get kind of bored easily. So if I do something too repetitively, like a craft or a certain project or something like that, I, I honestly get kind of bored and I want to move on and I want to try something new. So not that embroidery got like boring to me, but I was just kind of like, okay, I did that. Now like what else is out there that I can try that... I want to do and then I also just got so busy with my own like blogging stuff for those of y'all who are like new to my channel or have only watched my embroidery stuff I actually do like influencing and in fashion and beauty YouTube videos and like that is my like actual job I work with brands and I just make YouTube videos and so that stuff got super super busy and it honestly didn't leave a whole lot of time for me to work on stuff like this because like embroidery is such a passion project like I really don't make a lot of money from embroidering so I honestly just had to kind of put it on the back burner as work just got really busy and then also as Jason and I have been in the process of buying a home I just had to focus on things like my work so that we can save our down payment and all that stuff so I feel like honestly it just took the back burner for a lot of reasons. These types of videos obviously take a lot longer to film. They also take a lot longer to edit because I have multiple cameras and also just because they're long videos so they just take a while. cross back over to the other side here and I'm gonna try to level it out so that it's a straight line relatively straight so you can see we're, we're kind of embroidering around the windows right now you can embroider the windows first if you want I don't really think it matters honestly I'm kind of like maybe I should have embroidered the windows first but at this point it's like too late we're already in it y'all look at the back are you not so proud of this back? I mean, I'm proud. I don't know why you would be proud of my back. I'm proud. <laughs> but I am always so particular about how I embroider because I don't want to ever waste thread on the back of my embroidery. So I'm very strategic. It's almost like a game to me. Like how much can I embroider without it looking like there's anything on the back of my embroidery? Got 
this part done. You guys can see the color is so beautiful. I'm gonna now outline the parts right here and outline the windows with the same green. So I'm gonna go down here to the bottom corner again, like right where I started down here in this corner. And I'm gonna take my thread and I'm gonna go all the way up here to this corner to kind of clean up the line and make it straight like that. See how that just really cleaned it up, makes it look so much more just straight. Then I'm gonna come down here by this window and I'm gonna take my thread and I'm gonna go down to the bottom of the window right here and create another straight line to kind of round it off, looking nice, not too tight, but kind of like that. Then I'm gonna take this right here, down here by the flower box and do another straight line to make it very nice looking. I'm gonna go from this side over here and go across. I might actually go right here to kind of like section that off. And I'm gonna go across over here and then go from this bottom part right here. And we're gonna go back up to the top here to square it off. So you can already see it just looks so much more neat now with these lines right here. I'm gonna go to the window right here again and I'm gonna do the same thing and do a line down to the bottom of the window like this and then go from the flower box right here and go down to the bottom of the flower box and square it off like that. This is where we are at so far. You can see the color, you can see that we've got straight lines. This is the back. How good does the back look? I'm so proud of the back. So now what I'm gonna do is actually pop over to the second part of the house and do the exact same thing. this side of the house. I'm gonna do the same thing that I did over here and do the outline so that they are nice and clean lines. So starting down here at the base of the door, going to the top of the door like this, which just cleans it up and makes it look so much nicer. And then this top of the door, moving down to the base of the door here and yeah it just makes everything look so much straighter and nicer starting down here i'm gonna go to up here and that just like evens everything off so nicely you can see already it looks so much better i'm very very excited because i think this is actually looking pretty good obviously i have not done this pattern before like this is brand new to me and to y'all and sometimes i feel like whenever i do these embroidery videos i'm like i don't really know how this is gonna turn out so i kind of just like hope that it looks okay and most of the time it, it actually does turn out fine but with something like this where i've literally never embroidered a house before i was like i hope this looks good and so far so good I think it actually looks really nice. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip this over and in my thread tie a knot. And we are officially done with the siding of the house. 
So now we can move on to some of these details like the windows and then the door. I think we'll do that and then maybe we'll do the like siding up here and the roof in the next video. But I wanna try to finish this like bottom half so that we're in a good stopping place before the next one. I'm gonna do this cream around the outside of the door frame and the outside of the windows and then white on the inside. So let's just, we'll just see how it goes. I'm gonna start actually with the door because I feel like that might be the best area to just start with and see what it looks like. And to do the door frame, I am just doing straight stitches. like that then I'm gonna do some horizontal ones up here and cross over to the other side of the door frame and I think I want the door to be kind of a similar color to the roof so maybe do this like like a brown or like a kind of gray brown for for that so now I'm doing the top of the door frame here Oh, I think that looks really, really nice actually. And then now I'm going to do this side of the door frame. So this is what the outline of the door frame looks like. And I really like that. I think like a really pretty and a gray brown door will be nice up against the contrast of the cream. I'm gonna do the cream on the windows as well. And then I'm gonna do a kind of brown gray flower box here in front of the windows. And using the same exact thread color, I'm gonna do the window trim. I don't even know if I'm using the proper terms for these parts of the house. That's what I'm gonna call it. And so I'm going to start down here in the bottom right of my windows and stitch up, kind of like we just did the door frame, except these are gonna be for the windows. But same exact method. Just doing lots and lots of straight stitches for pretty much this like entire embroidery. This is like a very easy one. It's just very detailed. This middle window and stitch down. do stitches all along the top so just long stitches horizontally for the trim to kind of clean it up here and I hope that these are also straight this is where it all comes together I feel like <laughs> when you start doing these like outlining stitches it just starts to feel a little bit more clean the trim on the windows. Now I'm going to do the little window box and the door in like similar colors. So I'm gonna end my thread here. So far, I feel like this actually looks really good, which I'm shocked by because I never know how these things are gonna turn out. You guys can see a little bit more of the detail in this camera, but I feel like this is gonna be such a cute little house once I get the door in and then the windows done. But so far, I'm really, really glad I went with this like sage green. I think I'm gonna stick to my original plan and do this like really pretty cool tone brown. Maybe this one, cause it's a little bit lighter. So I'm gonna split the thread on this brown here. All right, so now I'm going to embroider the door. So I'm going to start at like the bottom right hand corner here and just do straight stitches moving up on the design. I'm going vertical. You can go horizontal if you want. 
you can do a different colored door you can do really anything you want so this is just how i'm doing it but like i said make it your own and be sure to tag me if you do back to the side right here you guys can see and I'm going to stitch one line across like this to kind of clean up the lines and look how nice that looks oh my gosh I love that that is so pretty I'm going to end my thread I think I want to do the window box for the flowers in the same color so I'm gonna do the same brown here for the window box. Just trying to like not have a ton of different colors going on. I really want it to be like very uniformed, I guess. So now I'm gonna do the window box down here and start on one side right here. And since this is a long stitch, I'm just gonna do one quick shorter stitch just to hold my place in case it comes up and move across the design like this so that we have a straight line. I'm going to just go back and forth horizontally to fill this in. I always describe embroidering like a coloring book. It's just like coloring in different shapes. You're just using thread. So if that helps you kind of visualize the process of embroidering, you're really just like shading in different shapes with different color threads. And I think it makes it a little bit more approachable. You guys can see it was just a few of these stitches back and forth and the window box is done. Now on to the actual windows, which I'm a little bit nervous about because I gotta be honest, I've never embroidered windows before. So I'm gonna end my thread back here. So the windows are gonna be this white, which is just the standard pure white. I never know like what color is a window when it's not glass, you know what I mean? So what I'm gonna do is actually fill in the entire thing, just white, just like we did the door. And then what I'm gonna do is reference my outline design that I had printed off so that I know where these lines are, but we're just gonna fill in the shapes just like we did the door. So that's why you want to kind of have that traceable design near you as a reference so that you know where to add in those details because obviously once you cover up the drawn pattern, you cannot see it. So just have that printed out as a reference just by you as you work on your embroidery. And what I think I'm gonna do is take a thin piece of gray and do the window pane outlines. We're just gonna see how this goes. This is like a blue gray kind of color, but what I'm gonna start by doing is doing a single stitch between the cream and the white. So this is where you gotta be really detailed. So you can see I'm just doing a single stitch like that between the cream and the white and then same here. You guys can hear the rain, it's starting to rain really hard so sorry if it gets a little bit harder to hear me but we're just gonna keep going because we're almost done with this first part here. And then we're going 
gonna do one more stitch and go up. And then we're gonna go and stitch across like this. So we just made our first window. Now I'm gonna do this on the other two. But you guys can see that's what it looks like once it's outlined. And I think it's super cute, adds some really good detail to it. So I'm gonna pop on over to this other side right here and do the exact same thing. window how cute is that I feel like adding some little flowers in the front is gonna be adorable so I'm gonna go ahead and end my thread here y'all I am so stinking excited with how this is turning out I honestly was very very worried before I started this I was like I feel like I'm about to commit hours to just a horrible embroidery and then people are gonna be like that looks terrible and then they're not gonna want to do it but I think this looks so good. So this is what we've got so far. I love the little details. I think this is so cute. Once we get the roof on, I think it's gonna be really, really pretty. But I'm gonna stop there for this tutorial. Be sure to click the link in the description box to download this template. That way, when part two rolls around, you can follow along when we do the roof. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video, found it helpful. Be sure to check out my supplies list and my other embroidery tutorials linked down below. If you are new here and you wanna stick around, be sure to hit that subscribe button. And I will see you guys in my next one very, very soon. Mm -hmm.